Good Friday evening. Good to have you with us. This is First Take Live. Hey, listen, uh, tonight's show, boy, I'm going to tell you, you're going to have to put your hat on and be really focused to listen to what my guest is talking about. We're going to be talking about is there such a thing as financial security? Is there such a thing as that? And uh, my guest tonight is a gentleman by the name of Vic Beck, and he is, I call him a financial truth educator. I'll tell you a little, before I introduce you to him, I'm going to tell you a little bit of how I met him. A number of years ago, I started to, I read this book called uh, The Creature from Jekyll Island, and I was given this book to read, and uh, that's, the, that's the cover right there. And uh, I, when I finally read that, I thought, oh my gosh, what is going on? And so what I did was, I thought, how can this be true? How could we have had the Bank Act uh, done by a bunch of guys who were basically ramrodding the, the, the economy? So if you really want to be shocked about how the bank works, the Federal Reserve, you'll read that book. And then what happened was someone told me about this guy who was kind of taking on the institutions, uh, although he's quieted down since then because he found out he didn't have to fight so hard. And uh, I went to listen to this gentleman in Coburg, and I recorded uh, the talk, and I kept playing it back over and over <coughs> again. And I said to myself, and this goes back a number of years ago, I said, one day I want to interview this guy because what he has done, what his journey has been, is really going to help us understand how come we're in so much debt, where the debt is coming from, and perhaps what you can do to remedy it if we get that far. But more importantly, tonight's show is about you learning about something that you had no clue about. And uh, bringing us that information tonight is uh, my guest. Welcome to the studio, Vic Beck. Good to have you. Pleasure to be here. Yeah. Thank you very much. So I saw you on stage, and we've had an opportunity to be here. So it's good to have you. Let me, let's talk a little, before we get into this thing, and I know that uh, we're going to talk, we're going to use the, the, the Monopoly game as, the, as, you know, as, as, your met, as, as a prop for you, not that you're against the game, it's nope. you're going to use it as, as a tool. Before we get to that, let's talk about your journey. Your journey kind of began similar to my journey, where I somewhat, it started with that book. Creature from Jekyll Island. Yeah, so tell me about that. What, what prompted you to look at that book, first of all? Actually, uh, my cousin uh, gave me the audio, uh, Ed Griffith's audio, which is about 45 minutes long, as you know. Yeah. And um, I sat on that for three months before I actually listened to it. And then when I listened to it, it was just it resonated, and I, and I, and I knew, um, it just confirmed that I knew that things are not as they appear. Right. And it caused me to, uh, to rethink uh, my situation at the time, and it caused me to get on the Internet and utilize the Internet to uh, search deeper into what I was hearing on this audio tape to confirm the truth of it. And what was the sense of uh, this thing that resonated within you? What was that sort of awakening? Like, what, what, what woke up? Well, I think all of us have uh, this feeling inside that something's not quite right out there. Yeah. And without a benchmark to know what that might be, we go through life wondering that and questioning a lot of stuff, but we don't actually do anything about it. Right. Or don't get the benchmark to, to seek something or go another path or anything like that. And so... Um, it just it was just a, an I, it just confirmed for me what I'd already known inside that things are not as they appear out there that what I'm being told is not necessarily the truth. Well, and thank God, and thank goodness for books. I mean, we also know that when com when countries are taken over by certain governments, the first thing they do is they burn the books because they don't want people to get knowledge. That's right. Right. So this is all about knowledge, and we're still able to get it in this country and in other countries still. And the internet has been a big source of that. So then take me a little further down the road. So now you get this knowledge, you wake up, and you go, okay. Now, everything you believe, to that point that you believe to be true, was not. Was confirmed not to be true, but it was, again, it was confirming what I'd already known, but was in denial or just wasn't admitting. But it's that little thing that we all have inside. Right. You just it, know when something's not right, but you don't necessarily know what it is. Okay. And so now, let's move a little further down this. So now, uh, in this book, The Creature of Jekyll Island, they talk about the creation of the federal bank and the bank, and we, we could also, in the U.S., called the yep. Fed, and today, of course, in Canada, we call it the Bank of Canada. Correct. We think that those institutions are actually owned by, uh, the, government. by the government. That's correct. And they are? Not. Not. Uh, the federal, U.S. Federal Reserve is no more federal than Federal Express. Okay. It's a private organization. It's, it's owned by uh, private cartels, uh, private individuals, investors. It has nothing to do with government. And in fact, if you look in the blue pages of the government phone book, the phone numbers are not listed under government agencies Okay. for those institutions. So they are really separate. They're part of uh, the game, but they're separate from the game, and they are, in fact, privately owned cartels. Right. So when people are saying they're talking to the Federal Reserve, or in this case, talking to the Bank of Canada, we're really not talking to anything but yet another private enterprise. Absolutely. Right. Just, just a business like any other business. Right. Now, that shocks most people because they think the Bank of Canada, 
is no more the Bank of Canada than Garth of Canada. <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe you are the bank. Oh, I could. Well, but that, it's yeah. it's it's a it's a perception. Okay. And people, I guess, you know, believe that this is uh, this is a bank for the people or of the government, but in fact, it's not. It's a private cartel. And like the bank would dictate to your life if you've got debts, they dictate to the government how to run their affairs just as much as they dictate to the people. Okay. All right. So now, um, we, well, I guess we want to go a little further down. We talk about financial, to answer the question at the bottom of the screen, uh, financial security. Is there such a thing in your, in your, in your mind? Well, absolutely not. And, and, and yet people have thousands and thousands of dollars, RSPs, assets and everything else that they've accumulated money because they think that's what they need to have. And you say that is still is not financial security. Nope. And I think if people analyze or review their lives, um, especially the older generation, they will, it doesn't seem to matter how much you work, you never really seem to get ahead. Right. You know, you might get a bigger house and a second car, but the debts are still there. The disposable income is not there, and it's, it's, it seems like it's, it's in our minds that we're going to achieve this success in the future, and the future never does actually come. And there's reasons for that, though. Okay. And that this is the, I guess, maybe why I'm here is to share some math with respect to working for a living, the difference between gross pay and net pay, if you will. All right, let's start there. Let's start in gross pay. You want to, so this, this, everybody needs to take notes, because uh, yep. having an audience with you is, because you don't do seminars anymore. Uh, only if asked, and... Um, uh, I've just kind of gone a little bit private there because yeah. there is a lot of confusion out there in the marketplace and I just kind of, I don't know, I got a message there that maybe people are happy where they're at and to not share some certain things with them. Right. That might rock their world to make them unhappy. Right. But, but actually, if they really look at it, they could get pretty happy. But, yeah. <laughs> if we, <laughs> go, to, if we go to the extent we yeah, talked okay. about earlier, All sure. Right. Okay, so let's carry on. But so the, the underlying cause is um, of, the, of the debt, if you will, is people working for a living. So and I know that's going to sound really strange because that's what everyone does. But the, what we have to do is take the math into consideration here, and the math is is the difference between gross pay, that is what you are paid at the at the face for your labor contribution. So let's say I work twenty dollars an hour, yep. and I, I I get twenty dollars for every hour I work, yep. and I work let's say ten hours, so there's uh, two hundred bucks. Yep. Okay. Let's, let's just let's just do it on a real simple figure that people can follow along. Okay, with. Let's say ahead. that your gross pay at the end of the week is a thousand dollars. Okay, fair. So your employer, by the gross pay, is acknowledging that the value of your contribution as an employee was worth $1,000. Top line. There it is. Okay. But also, that's an expense on the corporation of that amount. So in other words, if a corporation pays me $1,000 to make a cup, the corporation has incurred a $1,000 expense. Because they have to pay you for the, for the cup you made. That's right. Okay. Which means they have to sell the cup for at least $1,000 to recover the expense. To stay flush. That's right. To recover the expense so they can stay in business. Right to do it again and again and again. The problem comes in, it's, so this cup is now for sale, let's say on Monday morning for $1,000, plus PST and GST, minimally. And the, the, the problem comes in, if I may, is, and that is on uh, when the paycheck is issued, the gross pay recognizes that the labor contribution here is $1,000, but the worker goes home with an after-tax less than of, say, $650. So on that point, the worker does not have the money to buy back the fruits of his own production. So yeah, he couldn't buy it back because he's only taking home six fifty. Taking six fifty, but the cup is for sale for a thousand plus PSD and GST. And, okay. and and we have to think in terms here, Garth, of um, collectively across the country. Every person. Every every man, woman, every 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 employee out there is doing is building cups, cars, TVs, houses, furniture, building the highways, the apartment buildings, so on well, and so forth. Good far. example. Let's talk about GM. Someone goes, let's say it's a fifty thousand dollar vehicle. Yep. Right, and we know it's a big hot issue in, today because we're all worried about jobs. So fifty thousand uh, dollar vehicle, and you're making fifty thousand a year. Yep. Let's just say that there was a labor exchange. Sure. So now. But by the time they give you your deductions and everything else, you come away with uh, thirty-five. Thirty-five thousand. Right. So, I, so I, you I'm, can't even buy what you were paid to build. That's right. So in other words, I produced a car worth fifty thousand dollars. I did the work, or you people are doing the work, but you don't have the the the, 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 the means, the money available now to buy back the fruits of our own production. But the in other words, we're we're short in this case thirty five fifteen thousand dollars. And so in this case, though, but then people will say that money that you were deducted goes to pay for a lot of things that. You know, uh, it's not just the car, but you have to pay for the roads and the sewage and all that sort of stuff. So <laughs> someone's got to pay for that because someone had to build that. Well, that's what they tell us. And uh, but again, if I may get back to this collective okay, thing go. for a moment, right. and um, uh, keeping in mind that we people go to work for one reason, and that is to produce goods and services for each other. True. Not the corporation. The corporation is there to facilitate these these events, but not there to reap the benefits of it because we're building cars for ourselves. Corporations don't drive cars. Right. 
dogs don't drive cars, people do. People live in homes, not corporations. So we're, whatever, what, what the people are doing when they're going to work, we're doing it for each other. Right. I'm producing it for you, you produce okay, it for Okay, so me. if we think in terms of that the collective labor contribution or gross pay, uh, the, the wages paid last year, just for an example, in 2007, was a billion dollars across the country, after tax, all of those workers collectively only took home $650 million. All right, we're going to go to break. We're going to talk about so that difference that you're kind of using as an example here is part of the problem where the debts are coming it's from today. A, it's a big problem. All right, we'll be right, right back with more of this financial truth education. you got to watch this. It's pretty fascinating. At least it's going to make you ask some questions. First Take Live continues right after this.